Uh oh. Is it her internet connection? We can see her name. Yeah. April, are you in? I think that. Because I don't see her name on the attendee. On the attendee. On the attendee. On the attendee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just going to go. Diane, do you see that Max is in as an attendee? I don't know if you want to promote Oh, him. absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Make sure Nick's not in as. Hey, Max. Hi. Hello. All right. Um, given that we have corn, I'm going to go ahead and get started for tonight. It looks to be maybe a busy night. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to call tonight's business meeting and fiscal year 21 budget public forum to session for Thursday, May 21st. May I please have the attendance? Sure. Ms. Durgan? Here. Mrs. Giftos? Here. Dr. Gill? Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Sider? Here. Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. And Mr. Bennett? Here. And if you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I do have a couple adjustments for tonight's agenda. The first being that we are moving 5.0, the school board finance committee update until after the budget public forum. And I'm also striking 7.2, the motion to go into executive session from tonight's calendar. Are there any other adjustments? No, Liam, can we just clarify why we're moving the public comment? Because I don't want people to think it's for any, anything other than what it's sure, actually sorry. for. Um, thank you, Sarah. I meant to mention that in there. Um, this was done for a couple of reasons, one being the board felt it was very important to hear from the community tonight. Um, wanted to get your perspective on where we were before making any recommendations or comments on um, where we stand with the budget process as it is. And if there's anything else that you wanna add, Sarah, please do. Yeah, just that later tonight, we'll be, like you said, we'll be making recommendations to leadership council on some, some adjustments and we wanna make sure that we take into all the feedback that comes um, and either add to that list or take things off. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we go into the public forum section, I do just want to make a couple of reminders that there are two options to provide public comments during the forum tonight. You can email us if you don't want to speak at public comment at scarboroughschools.org. We actually have one to read tonight. Um, and we can read that statement into the public record. You can also raise your hand in the Zoom meeting and we will promote you as an attendee so that you can speak. The raising of your hand is very similar to lining up behind the podium in our public sessions. So you will be placed into the order um, of the queue based on the arrival of your hand raising. Due to recent issues in other districts with their Zoom meetings and security, we are asking that you use your legal name to be recognized for public comments tonight. Please state your 
full legal name and address, including a town if you are not a Scarborough resident for the record. Each member interested in speaking is invited to comment one time for approximately three minutes. We will do our best to keep the time consistent among the participants. Please refrain from directing statements at or about individuals tonight. And please also note the board will not be replying to or responding to any comments that are made. And with that, um, I'd actually like to start with the email that we received to kick off the public forum. It comes to us from Jennifer Jubliss and to whom it may concern. I would first like to thank you for your service to our town, particularly during this difficult and unprecedented time. I know the town and community are currently challenged financially, and I can only imagine all of the difficult decisions being faced by our public officials. I am not an economist. I don't claim to be an expert on the budget. I'm also not an educator, and I can't say with certainty what makes a school successful, and my third grader can certainly attest that I am not a teacher after the last two months. I am first a parent, however, of a soon-to-be fourth grader. She is bright and kind and deserving, and I watched with joy as she joined the theater club at Wentworth this year and came out of her shell in ways that I could never have imagined. I have also watched this same bright and motivated daughter with parents able to support her education has struggled with online learning. In addition to my role as parent, I am a pediatrician and an infectious disease physician. This means that I completed residency in pediatrics after medical school an additional three years of pediatric infectious disease training after that. So while I am not an expert in education and not an expert in economics, I do know a bit about public health, infection prevention, and have spent as long as anyone trying to figure out how to confront this virus in our community and specifically in our children. I am extremely concerned about how this budget will affect our ability to safely open schools and safely keep schools open throughout the year. The CDC and WHO currently recommend smaller class sizes desks six feet apart, individual schools and art supplies, individually wrapped school lunches, and children spaced one to a seat on the bus with open seats in between. Our past budget would not allow for this. Our current proposed budget even less so. Maine has not experienced the surge in the virus seen in major cities around the country, but Cumberland County has easily the highest rates in the state. Our, health, our state's healthcare system already has limited beds per capita, we continue to have limited PPE, and we continue to have limited testing. When children start school, not only will COVID circulate, flu and other respiratory viruses will as well. I'm concerned about the ability of our healthcare system to safely and efficiently evaluate children with fever and return them to school, particularly if our schools cannot adhere to recommended infection control policies because of lack of funding. It is true that children in general do not appear to be as severely affected by this virus as adults but they are being treated, in some cases requiring ICU admission, and with some cases even resulting in death. The new post-COVID inflammatory syndrome reported recently in children is real. It is rare and it is frightening. Half of children who are diagnosed with this require ICU admission based on current case series. Furthermore, children could potentially spread this disease to adults, whether they be school staff or family members. The jury is still out on how well children can spread this virus what we do know is that they have multiple more social contacts than adults, particularly with school in session, and have the same or more numbers of virus particles isolated in their airways. I look at this proposed budget and I am concerned about the ability of our community to take care of our children at school and by extension their families and the school staff. I am worried about educational opportunities. One thing this virus has laid bare is that the social safety net in our country is far too thin. Please don't decimate it further by hindering the health and education of our children. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. We do have one attendee in line. Don, I have unmuted you. You should be able to speak. Okay, can you all hear me? We can. Okay, my name is uh, Donald McMillan. I live at one, nine Abbey Lane, Scarborough. Maine, and I am a resident. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I understand that you all are in a tough position. This pandemic has decimated the local and global economy. The ripple effects to local businesses, hospitals, and tourism has and will have a huge impact on tax revenue. And so uh, I understand the position that you all are in tonight. 
Uh, I'm speaking to you tonight on behalf of the wrestlers and the wrestling boosters of Scarborough High School. Uh, we understand that that program is one that is being proposed to be potentially cut. Uh, in addition to being one of the world's oldest sports, wrestling is a great sport. It teaches discipline, sportsmanship, personal responsibility and accountability, confidence, mental and physical stamina, and it has helped kids with ADHD and other social disabilities gain confidence and leadership. It is one of the few sports that is truly co-ed. Scarborough has a girl on the team this year. And next year, we'll have five boys who have wrestled together since seventh grade. And if the program is cut, they won't be able to wrestle and represent Scarborough their senior year. This is something that they've been working towards their entire high school career. Uh, we know that you're in a tough spot with less money coming into the town from tax revenue and additional regulations handed down from the state, there has to be cost saving measures somewhere. And I would caution you not to cut too deeply in the quality programs that draw families to the town, which in turn raises our home values and also raises uh, tax revenue. My family and I moved to Scarborough this past fall because of the many programs and the uh, great school system so, um, you know, we're some of the people who are drawn here because of the quality that Scarborough provides. Um, we, the wrestlers and the boosters are imploring you, please do not cut this wonderful program. Once gone, it will never come back. It doesn't cost that much to fund wrestling. The school pays for the coach, assistant coach, refs, scorekeepers at home meets and transportation. The wrestling boosters pay for all the tournaments gear, snacks, and whatever other costs come up. We require very little from the budget. The program could be of even lower cost if the school board could consider changes to the following policies or make the following cost-saving measures. Allow parents to carpool athletes to events. Allow coaches, uh, allow volunteer coaches or consider a reduction in coaches uh, stipend rather than a total cut in the program. Consider raising participation fees to cover the costs subsidized by the athletic department. Require the boosters to cover a certain percent of the program costs. We can eliminate the cost of transportation as we parents go to almost all of the meets so we can carpool with the kids. We have also had offers of people willing to volunteer their time and we should consider taking them up on their offers. I would also add if there's concern about uh, contagious uh, infection during a wrestling meet. Uh, I would add that there's already a protocol in place now when the boys weigh in, they check them over for uh, any skin infections and uh, they could add additional steps to check their temperature and do any other health screening prior to a match. The program has helped our children to be more confident while also being humble, to be athletic, physically fit, mentally strong and be better teammates. Please do not cut the wrestling program and consider instead these other cost saving measures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Irwin. Thank you. Crystal, I believe I have promoted you all the way. All right. Um, my name is Crystal Ash Cuthbert and why Crystal, I think we've lost you. Can you hear me now? I can now. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Crystal Ash Cuthbert and while I live in Wyndham, my heart is in Scarborough. I've been lucky enough to teach the wonderful kids of the town for now 26 years. Um, tonight I am talking to you, however, as the um, president of the Scarborough Education Association, which represents the educators and support staff um, in Scarborough. Um, we are disappointed, quite disappointed that the board has chosen not to put ratification of the faculty contract on the agenda tonight. Um, at the last meeting, you said that um, you needed further clarification from the town council, which I believe that you have gotten over the two weeks, and yet it is still not on the agenda. 
it is of uh, a T8 agreement, which is tentatively agreed. Um, and so why that is not being acted upon there, we still are not sure. Um, this action or lack of action continues to devalue and disrespect the people who work most directly with the children of Scarborough. And tonight we're also disappointed that the Board of Education has not pushed back more with the town council for your charge is to do what is in the best interest of the students of Scarborough. You have not met that responsibility that you took an oath to do. So tonight, the educators of Scarborough respectfully ask you to put ratification vote on the next school board meeting and to publicly oppose anything that the town council suggests that is less than a 2%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Porter, thank I believe you. I've brought you forward. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to speak tonight about the proposed cuts to the FY21 budget. Um, very concerned about these proposed cuts. And I did speak as well last night at the uh, town council meeting. Um, I realized that right now, a lot of the uh, reductions are with the town council and uh, the consideration that they have and whether or not it's a 0% or a 2% or somewhere in between. Um, the proposed cuts to the school budget uh, for next year are very, run very deep. Um, there's a lot of cuts um, to extracurricular and co-curricular activities that are being proposed uh, in the budget. After three months, it will be three months in June of remote learning um, at home this year. Kids are disconnected from many aspects of their lives, including those activities that provide them a sense of accomplishment, motivation, and connection, such as sports and clubs. Our son will be a freshman in the fall, and if he does not make the basketball or, or baseball varsity teams, two sports he loves, he was very much looking forward to playing on a first team with his friends. However, he and his friends now are upset to learn that they may not be able to play at all because of a nominal uh, budget cut. Um, and this will greatly impact their lives after two months of unprecedented at-home learning. Our daughter went through the middle school a few years ago when seventh grade sports were also cut as well as the language program at that time. And again, those things are back for at least the, the seventh grade sports is back on the chopping block this year. The constant cutting and restoring of activities that kids love and look forward to is especially difficult and saddening given the isolation and mental health of our kids um, over the last couple of months with the COVID crisis. This is simply an extension of this crisis for many of our kids and looking at the long list of athletics and clubs being considered for reduction. We realize that the Board of Education has been put in a tough spot. You've been given a mandate by the town council or at least direction by the town council to cut expenses. Um, I think in an extraordinary way that you can't, you can't possibly meet without cutting the quality of the education that we have. So um, I will continue to, um, I will be going to the June 3rd public hearing. I also will be speaking up and I'm urging everyone I know as well to do the same in order to restore or at least make sure that there's no further cuts uh, in the school district budget for FY21. If there are other possibilities that we can look at in order for us to save programs that are most important to kids, um, I would urge the board to do that. And I would also urge you to continue advocating as I will be to make sure that we're, that the um, school district budget is not reduced any further um, from its um, initial proposal. Um, I think, the more people that can speak up, the more we can let people know that our district is worth funding. Um, and I'm very concerned about it. And for those people who say that teachers shouldn't get a raise next year, I saw that um, article in the Scarborough Leader today. I would just say this, um, teachers have more than earned that 2% raise for next year. Um, over the last two months, I can tell you the amount of hours in work that I know teachers have had to put in in learning a new model of education um, they certainly have earned that 2%, if not a lot more than that. Um, and I would just advocate that 
no reductions to the school district budget occur um, any further from here in order to protect the quality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Porter. Hey, Leanne, just, just real quick before you continue. I, sure. um, there's a message that people can't get in and I think it's due, I don't, is there a limit on the number of attendees? Yeah, I can speak to that because I actually have had our IT department looking at this behind the scenes um, since the start okay. of the meeting. And there is a 100 person attendee limit um, and we are at that. So unfortunately, um, people can log in through the Zoom link. Um, we definitely still wanna hear people's feedback. And I believe Leanne, you mentioned that folks can email public comment at scarboroughschools.org. I, I think, um, you know, unfortunately we have to work within the parameters of the product that we have. I mean the YouTube link, Diane? The, the Zoom license that we have um, has a webinar limit of 100 attendees um, and we are at that 100 number. The, the alternate method of participating through YouTube though? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Did I say it the opposite? I, I, that's what I heard. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where is that link that, so that um, she can share it with the people that should have messaged her? Yep, that link is posted right on our district webpage. If you go to the first page where the calendar is, it should be embedded um, right where it says that we're having a school board meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I apologize. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Hello, Nick. Hi, Nick. I'm on a phone because my internet is down. So this is a little bit um, low tech, but I'm here. We glad, we're glad you made it in some form. <laughs> um, Morgan Porter, I have, oh, April, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask if Kelly would put up a quick Facebook post for us, if she can. I can, I'll do it right now. Great, thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. All right, Morgan, I have promoted you and have opened you up to speak. Uh, hi, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Um, so my name is Morgan Porter and I'm a junior at um, Scarborough High School. I kind of just wanted to touch upon um, the cuts for the high school in terms of athletics. I think that would be very detrimental to the future of a lot of kids because um, I'm being recruited for swimming. And I think college coaches looking at the progression from freshman year to high school is a big factor in recruiting process. And I think cutting out non-varsity sports would be very detrimental to the future of those kids. And um, another thing, um, that's a whole year that you're putting behind Scarborough kids, even if they didn't make varsity the first year, they are most likely to make it the later years in their high school. And that's kind of taking away a whole year of their sport that they love. So I think, again, taking away that will not only affect how colleges will look at Scarborough High School, but also um, how they progress throughout their high school years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rose Parmelo, I have promoted you. I think you just need to come off mute. Oh, there we go. Am I loud enough or am I too loud? Nope, perfect. Okay, because I get really excited. Some of you might remember that. Uh, my name is Rosemary Pomerlo. I'm a teacher at Blue Point School. I've been a teacher for Scarborough for 19 years, and I'm proud of that. Um, but I'm very concerned right now. I thank you all for your service, and I don't want any of your shoes. However, I think we need to stand up and find a way to work together and fight for our kids. Our kids need sports. Our kids need teachers. And we have no idea what we're going to be walking into in the fall. And I'm proud of our teachers. I'm proud of the people I work with. And I want us to fight. I want us to educate our community 
and find a way to find the money to provide free and appropriate education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wesley? Hello, everyone. You can hear me, I hope. I can hear you. Excellent. Um, I'm a teacher at the high school English department. I've been teaching for five years, a long time before that. I'm not a Scarborough resident. I live in Kennebunk, um, but I am very much supportive of the Scarborough School's mission, and I'm supportive of the board. Um, I know in the last six weeks to two months, all of us have been placed in a position of having to be reactive. Um, we've had to react to conditions that were thrust upon us that we had no, in well, that some of us may have anticipated in January, but certainly none of us would have anticipated last November. Um, what I wanna speak to today is, is a kind of a more um, general or large scale issue about being more proactive and supple and uh, flexible in, in moving forward to anticipate possibilities that may come about and may come true. And one that I'm referring to in particular was that I, I saw a news report this morning that the Department of Treasury, for example, has recommended that Congress indeed pass more um, help for states, townships, municipalities, um, frontline workers, EMTs, emergency responders, fire police, and teachers. Now, we don't know today whether that will happen. But it seems that it's something that we can monitor, keep our finger, you know, keep our finger on the pulse, so to speak, of that development. And I guess what I'm worried about or concerned about is that the town council will make a budget decision without the kind of flexibility and the suppleness that would allow the town to incorporate, uh, let's say, future funding. I guess what I'm afraid of is I'm afraid the cuts, I'm afraid the cuts will be locked in. And then other monies will become available. And perhaps, I'm not trying to um, project any uh, ill will or ill action, but perhaps the town council would simply sit on that money or use that money uh, for the town and perhaps not think about the schools as an equal partner in any kind of money coming down the uh, federal pipeline, so to speak. So I think that's really all I want to say is that um, there's a time to be reactive when conditions are thrust upon you, and I understand that. But I would speak to this idea of being more forward-looking still. Um, we know we're going to have to be in the fall. We don't know what conditions we're going to encounter. But I definitely want us to keep in mind uh, future federal funding that could alleviate um, at least the need for some of the cuts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. To me, explain. I have promoted you to be able to speak. I think you just need to take yourself off the mute on your end. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you, Leanne. Um, Denise Blaine, I reside in Buxton, Maine. I am a teacher at Scarborough High School. Um, I've been teaching there for 19 years. Um, I grew up in Scarborough and my parents still reside in Scarborough. Um, tonight, I, there are a few things that I would like to um, put on the table that I've heard over the past couple of weeks. First, um, I need to thank the Finance Committee for um, the work that they've been doing. Um, I do not envy any of you. Um, second, I have learned far more than I've ever wanted to about budgets. Um, in the past two weeks. In addition to trying to keep up with my classroom, um, I'm trying to keep up with this. Um, tonight, the first thing that comes to my mind is what I heard last night at the town meeting. Um, I heard some town councilors say that they weren't looking for teacher cuts, that they they were hoping that the board would, would have given them something else. And I um, I was a little bit confused about that. And then they started talking about capital improvements, um, which seemed to make sense. Why are we looking at reducing people when we all can agree that we are going to need people? 
we might not need curriculum updates. We might not need the walls painted. We might not need those extra fixtures. We might not need that turf redone next year, but we're gonna need people. So I would ask the board to consider looking at those capital improvements as a way to keep this budget reasonable um, and, and not cut people. I need my colleagues. I don't need stuff. Um, my last point tonight is kind of what I mentioned last night. My parents are on a fixed income. Um, paying their taxes every year is a little bit harder to swallow, but they invested in this town 40 years ago. And I think we need to give the people who believe in the school the opportunity to support it with something reasonable. So I just asked the board tonight to slow down on the people cuts and look at some of the thing cuts. Um, we, we don't need things right now. And if this whole pandemic hasn't taught us that, um, I'm worried for our society. So please take a look at those CIPs as what I heard the town council asked for last night um, and not reduce staff. So thank you. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. We did get another public comment that came in and I'm gonna go ahead and read this. Um, my name is Molly Chester, resident of Barry Road in Scarborough. I'm the middle school student council advisor and a sixth grade science teacher. I would like to speak on behalf of the middle school student council, one of the few social clubs available to students at the middle school as we continue on the path of budget cuts and budget decisions. The student council at the middle school plans the school grade, sorry, the school grade level dances, organizes community outreach such as Stuff the Food Bus Drive and the school-wide picnic in Memorial Park raises funds for school benefits, such as our 2019 donation towards new school water fountains, and gives students a voice amongst their peers and a direct connection to their administrators among fielding many day-to-day -day and ongoing student concerns. There were years not long ago where there was no middle school student council, and in those years, there were no school dances. Students who are not sports oriented had precious few opportunities to form peer groups outside of their daily classes, especially like-minded peers across grade levels who they might otherwise never meet. I also feel comfortable saying that I have formed lasting connections with my student council reps, giving students a trusted adult at school who they can come to with concerns and thoughts that they might not otherwise have an opportunity or desire to share with others. This has indeed happened, and I am proud to have been available at these times. Often when cuts to extracurricular activities are proposed, the number of students who participate in a given activity is used as a potential measure of viability, and this is not always a fair measure. I deliberately work to keep the numbers of grade level reps at nine students per grade so that students who do participate have a voice and an opportunity to actually affect change and so that students can immediately recognize their grade, lo grade level reps. Please consider the need for student discourse, community outreach, school improvement, and peer connections that a student council provides to our middle schoolers, both the reps themselves and all the students who benefit from the actions of the council. Thank you, Molly Chester. Thank you very much, Molly. Okay. Um, with that, there is nobody else who has raised their hand to speak. Um, I'd like to give you just another moment. Oh, Gail Labonte, I am promoting you to uh, speak. You just need to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Um, I want to thank you all for your service. I know what we are going through currently for um, you folks, for our community members, for the staff at the school, for our students is not easy. Um, I want to talk just a moment about the development that has been happening in the community for the past several years. Um, when you look at the developments at Leighton Farms, Highgis Parkway, the Scarborough Downs, Eastern Village, Dunstan Crossing. These are all bringing in new family residences. Most of them, um, not just single family, but multi-family residences. 
And of course, with new development, brings new families, brings children that require education. Um, with new increasing sizes of families and children, we require new resources to teach these children. Class sizes eventually are going to increase. Buildings obviously need to be able to accommodate these children. For the town council to be asking us to put in a 0% increase, given all of these new developments over the years is just an unreasonable request. And I would ask that the school board be pushing back on the town council and letting them know that it's unreasonable. Um, instead, right now, I feel as though the pushback is back on your employees because our contract is still tabled and not passed. Um, and I also feel that the pushback is on our students with the elimination of very important sports and clubs. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Patrick, I promoted you to speak. You just need to take yourself off mute. Thank you. I'm Patrick Reagan. I live at 5 Howard Lane in Scarborough. I have three children in the schools. I teach at Wentworth. I've taught at Wentworth for 20, 21 years. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to, to say. Uh, I appreciate everybody's effort um, and the work they do for Scarborough schools. I know it's uh, difficult and challenging at times. Um, but a couple of points I'd like to make is that uh, one is people. You can't replace people. People are what matters. It's what uh, affects kids every day. We've seen it um, with our remote learning is that the kids really, uh, they really need each other. We need the teachers. Um, that connection is, is, could be lost if we're making deep cuts into the schools. And I'd ask you to think about that a bit. I know uh, it's been touched upon um, a little bit. I think we need to, to think about um, the kids and what really matters. Again, I think, uh, you know, the people across the board, when you look at teachers, you look at uh, lunch ladies, bus drivers, if we're cut, making a lot of cuts, then we're affecting our safety as well. And that's what I worry about too, is that uh, we're gonna affect the safety of how we do things and the quality of our, our education. Um, also think about, um, my kids are involved in a lot of sports and uh, theater and activities. Um, I worry about that. Uh, those are the kind of lifeline that, that keeps kids going and motivated. Um, so I'd ask you to consider that um, wholeheartedly. I mean, I can't think back to my, my career uh, as, a, as a teacher or a student where I can't think like, hey, that curriculum textbook was really awesome. It was really the people that made, made a huge difference. Um, when I think about the great Maya Angelou quote, um, you might not remember what a person said, but you will remember how a person made you feel. So I'd ask you to, to keep your hard work going and uh, consider all the needs. Um, but again, I think you gotta think about, you know, people really matter over textbooks and whether it's curriculum, uh, improvements, those can wait, but certainly uh, people are, are the main factor that affect everybody's life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sheila Taylor, you've been promoted. You just need to bring yourself from mute. Hi there, can you hear me? We can. Great. Okay. So my name is Sheila Taylor. Uh, I live at 69 Jasper Street in Scarborough. Um, I'm a new resident of Scarborough. I've been here for about a year now. I moved here from Scotland. And uh, one of the reasons that we chose Scarborough when we moved here was because of the great things that we'd heard about the school district. 
um, about the staff, about the activities which were offered to the young people, about the curriculum. Um, and up till now, I have to say, everything that we had heard has been completely borne out. Um, my son uh, is at the high school just now, and I myself am actually a long-term substitute teacher within the district too. Um, I've been so impressed by the quality of the education offered and all the opportunities um, that the high school has offered to my son. And I've also been really impressed by the professionalism and dedication of both uh, my son's teachers, um, who they've continued to provide a strong, solid learning experience um, over the past two months um, in incredibly difficult um, circumstances. And my co-teachers um, who have absolutely risen to the challenge of engaging kindergarten through second grade through online methods, which I'm sure you can appreciate is, is a tricky thing to do. Um, as a teacher myself, I've got more than 20 years teaching experience, mostly in Scotland, obviously. Um, and I can absolutely testify that proceeding with the depth of the cuts that are proposed is going to significantly undermine the ability of the schools um, and the teaching staff to keep moving through what's going to be extremely difficult uncharted waters over the next year. Uh, you're going into a school year where nobody knows exactly what things are going to look like. You're going to need staff, you're going to need resources. I would echo what the previous um, gentleman said, saying that nobody's going to be uh, thinking about the fantastic textbooks that they, they always love to use, but they will be thinking about the people that they are perhaps not going able, be, they won't be able to, to, to work alongside. Um, the children, the young people are going to be um, thinking about the activities that they were unable to take part in. Um, your staff um, and all your support staff as well, not just teaching staff, they need resources. They need to be able to focus on the needs of the young people in front of them. And I honestly think that if the cuts go ahead as deeply as they are being proposed, then that is going to have a really detrimental effect on your the school system here, which would be a real, real shame. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carrie Becker, you've been promoted to talk. You just need to bring yourself for a mute. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi, uh, my name is Carrie Becker and I live at 20 High Point Road in Scarborough. And I am a teacher at the high school. I teach English and theater. Um, I just wanna speak very briefly about my experience teaching um, class sizes. And that the, the experience of teaching a class of 18 kids versus 25 is enormous. And I don't know that anybody, if you have not been in the classroom, understand how difficult it is to really, really um, meet all of the students' skills and all of, the, all of their needs when you have those five extra students. So now the high school teachers are facing the harsh reality that we might actually have that load. And I'm not worried about how demanding my job is going to be. I will meet those needs. And I know that all of my colleagues are hard workers, but it really breaks my heart that kids are going to have to be in classes where they can't learn, where there's too many kids in the room. And I just know from my experience of the distant learning format and all of the emails that I'm getting from kids all the time who need their teachers. Um, and I think all of my colleagues can speak to that, that we are constantly in contact with these kids because they need that contact with their teachers. So I just want to say that class size is growing and getting bigger and losing teachers is going to seriously, seriously be detrimental to their education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have received a few um, emails in the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and read those. The first is from Courtney Thomason. Dear BOE, I thank you for all that you are doing and appreciate all of your hard work. Teachers at the heart of any school, disrespecting them as the BOE has shown by the lack of a contract hurts morale, which affects teaching. I'm a Scrabble resident for the past 16 years, in addition to teaching for the past 10 years in this district, and also have two young children in the district. Thank you, Courtney. We also have um, an email from Kate Swinburne. Hi, my name is Kate Swinburne. I'm a resident, a parent, and an educator in this wonderful town. I have taught in this town for 16 years. 
and I'm proud to be known as a Scarborough teacher. I'm also so very pleased at the education of my own, that my own children get. I first want to say I'm not envious of anyone working on a budget. The emotion, passion, and dedication that go into the process is something I can't imagine. Thank you for doing the work. Thank you for listening to community members tonight and taking in all that they have to say. This town is known for its wonderful school system. This is why I chose to raise my family here, why I chose to send my own kids to the schools, why I decided to teach here. As a mom of a third grader and a sixth grader and an educator at the K-2 level, I am sad to think of the aftermaths of what this budget could possibly do. Our students deserve better. Our schools deserve better. Our students are going to lose so many educational opportunities after school activities and resources that they need to develop. These students and programs are worth funding. For me, it's worth fighting for. As far as teachers being cut, what does this mean for the students? What will classrooms look like? What courses will students not be getting that they should? The Scarborough School Department believes in opportunities and getting the student body ready for the real world. If we lose so much, will we, will we be doing that or will we be doing it a service? I ask that you reconsider and keep this budget more reasonable, be more flexible and continue to work with the town council. Think about what is most important for our students in schools. When we as teachers don't have what we need in the classroom for our students, we problem solve and keep working until a solution is solved and the students benefit. I ask that you as a board do the same. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kate. And then from Brittany Frisco. Hi, my name is Brittany Frisco. I live at 34 Glendale Circle, Scarborough, Maine. I have a seven-year-old daughter who attends Blue Point School. I work as an ed tech for Scarborough Public Schools. As a parent, I recognize the hard work our teachers put in for our children. As a colleague to the teachers, I see the hard work these teachers put in each and every day. Many of these teachers have been with Scarborough for many years. These teachers have worked harder this year than ever, the year they are without a contract. The contract that is supposed to give them the raises they have earned. Not ratifying the contract is concerning for all teachers, especially those who may be retiring this year. I ask that you please listen to the public and our teachers. Please honor your word and ratify the con faculty contract at the next board meeting. Thank you, Brittany Prisco. All right, Karen Rowan. Okay. I have promoted you and unmuted you. Great. Um, usually I prepare comments, but I didn't tonight. So bear with me because my words don't come out as easily when I'm speaking versus writing. Um, I just wanted to, to kind of suggest a yes and a lot of the the people who have spoken tonight have talked about the importance of teachers. Um, I heard heard several people say, we don't need the things, the curriculum's not as important. But as the parent of students who are um, very likely to fall through the cracks, one has an IEP and one has a 504, I would argue that it's all really important. Um, I, I learned at a meeting recently um, well, not recently, I mean, we haven't been going anywhere, but um, from Monique, the curriculum director, that uh, our students are behind in something like phonemic awareness. Um, so obviously the early reading programs that we're using with students aren't doing the job. There are tons of students who are falling through the cracks every day and still requiring remedial reading services through middle school. And I'm sure we, we have some students in high school who either graduate without being able to read or drop out because they're so frustrated with the way the curriculum is designed and, and it doesn't meet their needs. So I think, um, I know we're looking at, you know, what trying to prioritize things in a year where we feel like we need to make some tough choices. Um, but I, I would argue that we shouldn't make it so easy. <laughs> um, for, I, I'm not going to offer up anything that I think should be cut because I think we've been operating on some pretty lean budgets for my the whole time I've lived in Scarborough. Um, and I think the the town council saying, oh, let's take a look at a 0% um, increase and see what that looks like instills panic in people. And then we say, oh gosh, 
well, we can't lose these things. What can we lose? And I don't want to make that job easy for them. I think that 0% is ridiculous, but I'm not going to say, but 2% sounds great because anything below level services sounds absurd to me and actually quite dangerous um, given the extras that we'll need to be thinking of um, in the coming year. I also wanted to, I sent an email earlier, so I'm not sure everybody's had a chance to see it, but um, what Mrs. Chester said really resonated with me and was kind of what I was trying to get at with looking at clubs that are, um, that have lower enrollment than other activities, clubs and sports. Um, and I think she made a really good point that um, we need to think about like who, who are the kids who are at these clubs and can they get those needs met in other ways. Um, I told you guys the story about the wrestler who was honored at the meeting last year and, and he looks like the, he's just this big gentle giant. I, know, I don't know his name, I know nothing about this kid, but when I heard about the wrestling cuts, I just thought of him and thought, where else does he fit in? Um, my kids don't play sports at all, but I, I just think of all the kids who, who have one place where they fit in and I, I don't want you to think that because there are only seven kids on this team or in this club that it doesn't matter um, because it might matter more than the activities that have high enrollment. Um, yeah, I think that's all I, like I said, I normally wouldn't jump in without preparing comments because my brain isn't great at this time of night, but um, I felt like it was important to say those things. So thank you. Thank you, Erin. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Daniel Kelman, I've promoted you. You just need to bring yourself from being on mute. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I spoke at a previous meeting uh, and I'd encourage the board. Uh, it was actually a town council meeting, but I, I did encourage the board to consider analyzing the budget and seeing what it would take to uh, not have any layoffs. And with some recently published information, I actually did the calculations myself. Uh, and what it comes out to is that to avoid laying anybody off, you only need to have a 2.22% increase. So that is less than a quarter percent above the goal originally set. Uh, and is really a pretty minor increase. Um, what that translates to in taxes over the 2% is $3 if you have a $100,000 house. If you have a $250,000 house, it's $8. If you have a $500,000 house, it's $16. Um, it seems like a very small price to pay to avoid having anybody lose their job and avoid some of the detrimental effects that other people have described uh, in this meeting. So I would encourage the board to go back to the town council and propose a budget that does not include any layoffs. And at the previous meeting, one of the counselors mentioned that, you know, the board and the town council don't pass the budget. They present an option for the voters to vote on and that we, the voters, uh, I'm a Scarborough resident myself, um, we get to make the decision about whether we want to pay that money or not. And I would really like to propose that you give the voters of this town an opportunity to pay an extra three or eight or $16 a year so that we don't have to lay people off. We don't have to have larger class sizes and we don't have to uh, have these negative effects on the school. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to speak and uh, please consider uh, this increase. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Are there any other comments that anyone would like to make tonight? Leanne? Yes. Uh, I'm just monitoring the Q&A and um, I know it's not a, um, we, we aren't using it as a um, venue for public comment, but I, it does look like there are a couple of public comments. I'm just checking in with the people 
to see if they meant them as public comments to be read into the record. Okay, if Hillary, if they do, would you mind um, reading them? I can't see the Q and A with screen sharing. Yes, I'll just give them a couple minutes to to respond. Okay, thank you. Um, Man, Max, it's Max. Um, I, I was just going there. Uh, Max, go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, I guess in this situation, I just find myself to be in a really strange place. Uh, I'm a student and I see the day in and day out lifestyle of students. Christian and I know how they think better than anyone else here. However, I'm also representative. I see the inner workings of the school district on a larger scale and who decides what happens to the students and how they decide. I don't know anything about economics or taxes or funds or whatever, but I do know what students want and need firsthand. Students don't need five televisions in the lobby at the high school or new sports equipment for gym class or any of the fit, shiny, fancy, materialistic things that we desire as humans. What students need is people, as has been mentioned several times tonight. Students need teachers. They need activities to go to after school. They don't go to school just to learn, and I can say that that's a fact. They go to school to see their friends and interact with teachers and go to do the fun things that they're passionate about after school. Students don't need new curriculum. We far surpass the statewide average in test scores and reading and math proficiency, but our art students are lost in the sports oriented school community. Activities, sport, sports and arts and academics alike are how students make friends and we shouldn't deny them of that. So many comments tonight have centered around sports and I feel as though other programs are being slighted. I sent out an email to the board and town council and, and it expressed everything I have to say. And I feel as though my own voice and Kristen's voice are not considered in the way that they should be because we're the students. Above all, I wanna see students needs considered above all and I need to see students put first, thanks. Thank you very much, Max. Thanks, Max. So I do have a public comment, Leanne, if you're ready for it. Yes, please. Um, so uh, I'm just reading what I have here. Uh, my name is Jamie C. Hagen of Scarborough. I feel that any cuts to the sports programs would be awful for our kids. Sports allow for social interaction, physical activity, and connections to others. When kids feel connected, they feel good about themselves and in turn then do better in school. Teachers are our lifeline for these students. They give so much to the kids. They are certainly not paid or respected nearly enough. I feel that the students should be our first priority. Please think carefully as to how this budget will affect the kids. Thank you. And then um, Kelly, do you have an email? If not, I can read the other comment. If you could, that would be great. Do you have it, Hillary? I, I believe so. Okay. Um, so I have another comment from Mar Margaret Clements, um, also known as Peggy Clements. The comments shared during these meetings show promise that the Scarborough community members, students, and educators are passionate and support our schools. Through my 31 years as one of your educators, the greatest advancements in SPS has been when all come together in support of our kids. Thank you all for taking the time to speak out. Together, we will do what's best for kids. Thank you. Um, I do have one other, and it's from Brett Coffin, 46 Evergreen Farm Road, and it was a question. In my opinion, students are the VIP stakeholders. With this in mind, have students ever been consulted when creating or slashing a budget? I'm talking about a cross-section of demographics from 12 to as low as students care about their education, and have opinions. These young people know what is of value to them and what is of a lesser amount. It would help reduce the political theater, maybe. Thank you very much, Mr. Coffin. Cool. All right. There was nobody else in queue. I'm going to just give it one more minute in case anyone changes their mind and wants to say anything. With that, Maureen, I have promoted you. If you can bring yourself from being on mute. Hi, can you hear me? I can. 
Thank you. Um, my name is Maureen Ngati and I'm a special ed tech um, in the Scarborough School District. I love school district. I love working in Scarborough. Um, I just wanted to say to the board, and I'm super nervous because uh, this wasn't planned, that just please consider when you're looking at the budget and the budget cuts. My concern is um, what it, how it will impact the students um, now and what we'll be facing in the fall. And I just, you know, when you're looking at the budget cuts, I'm, I'm just thinking about how it will impact the students. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, going once. Okay. Um, before I close out the public comment section, I just really want to thank everybody for taking the time to um, share your thoughts with us. It is really, it is necessary to hear from the community. Um, so we appreciate that you taking the time, whether it was via email or speaking, um, very much appreciated. Okay. With that, moving into the School Board Finance Committee update. All right, so are we ready? Cool, yeah, you can, can you actually go back, please? Sure. Thank you, we just live there for now. I just wanna give a quick update. Um, so I wanna just talk through kind of where we have been, where we are now and, and where we're going. And then um, I'm going to share some sort of recommendations or suggestions that the School Board Finance Committee has that we would like to make to a leadership council um, and give the opportunity for the rest of the board members to comment. Um, so I guess where we are in the process is, uh, or where we've been rather, is we've had a number of meetings now where um, the leadership council has shared with us their proposal for reductions um, large based off of a goal that was set by town council. Um, we've reviewed that as a finance committee. We've reviewed that with town council now, I think three times, maybe two or three times. Um, and we've heard a lot of feedback from our community members, from our teachers, including tonight. Uh, very grateful for everyone joining and sharing that feedback. Um, you know, by email, and uh, we're, we want you guys to know that uh, we're listening, and so I think that some of the, the recommendations that we're going to make are hopefully you feel reflective of some of the feedback that we've been receiving. Um, before we dive into that, uh, there are a couple points that were made in early on in the comments, uh, the public comments that I, that I did just want to speak to. Um, one is around sort of our the level, our sort of relationship with town council. Um, and the second is just to clarify Denise's point around um, CIP. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on that, but I do think it's important because it was talked about a lot at the town council meeting last night. Um, and actually, I know April has this all teed up, so I'm going to tee her up and she can talk about that. Um, I think but just the first thing I'll say is, you know, everyone from the board, I believe, is on record saying that they will not support a 0% budget. So period, there's no further debate. Um, I, I don't want any teacher or anyone listening to think that that's something that we'll entertain. Um, and we've said that publicly, uh, all the town councilors know where we, where we stand. So that's, that's not for negotiation. And kind of how the process works from here is, you know, the directive that we received from them was, was their first reading. Um, we actually have our second reading before their second reading. So if they were to give us a further directive, they would uh, they would have to have a special meeting or they would technically be doing it after our second reading. So at the moment, um, what will pass at second reading, unless we're giving further, given further di direction, will be to meet their first reading goal, which was 2% or less. So it would be something within the confines of the, the existing um, budget. If they decide to propose a 0% budget, um, then that will go forward to the voters without the support of the school board. And at that point, we have options to engage our community and ask us to go and actually turn down the budget because it's not something that we can get behind and we hope that um, our community feels the same way. Um, and so I, I guess I just I, that was important for me to make that point because I, I know that not all of you have the time nor the interest to join 
all of the town council and school board meetings. Um, but I, I, we are pushing back. Um, we are doing it in a way that I think is productive and collaborative. Um, we do not want them to put forward a 0% budget. And I think right now we have done with the help of our leadership um, council and with the help of people uh, dialing into public comment. I, I think we've gotten the point across that doing so will be detrimental, and I believe that they will not go down go that direction because of the collaboration that we've had. Um, but anything can happen, and so I guess we'll just continue to do our part and fight for what we believe, and we'll see the cart where the cards fall. And so April, I guess I'll pass it over to you to just do the CIP bit if you want, um, and then we can cover off what our recommendations are for the leadership council. Sure. Um, and so for to speak to what Sarah just said, um, we know and appreciate that not everybody spends all of their time watching finance committee meetings or town council meetings. Um, and so the reason Sarah had asked me to speak to the CIP portion was because it was something that um, I actually spoke to last night um, during the town council workshop, um, during which we, we presented what a 0% budget would look like to the town council. Um, during that time, there were some counselor comments that indicated that the school board um, was prioritizing investments in our CIP, which CIP stands for Capital Improvement um, Plan. And so there was some concern that we were um, prioritizing those investments over things like teacher salary. Um, and so to clarify that a little bit, I thought it was important to um, make sure that people understand that this isn't something that the town council always does, but this year at first reading, the town council um, approved individual budgets. And when I say that, um, it's important to understand that the CIP budget is separate from our general operating budget. And so the town council at their first reading actually approved a set dollar amount for both the CIP budget and our net operating budget. Because the two are considered separate funds, we as a school department and with our, in conjunction with our leadership council, reduced our CIP budget by the amount directed to us by the town council. And then we in turn reduced our um, net budget by the amount that we were directed to by the town council at their first reading. And we were viewing those two budgets separately. Um, and so what we hadn't discussed with town council until last night was the option to um, make further reductions to our capital improvement budget. Um, and in doing so, we would actually be requesting that they increase our net budget amount, um, which you know technically comes across as a wash. It both affects the overall mill rate in the exact same way. Um, and so if the, our bottom line as a finance committee is that if the town council is shooting for a certain mill rate and what they're telling us is that any appropriated money affects the mill rate in the same way, they kind of gave us um, a new path that we didn't necessarily think that we had last night um, to pursue further cuts to our CIP budget and um, which would ease some of the cuts that we felt like we had to make in order to meet the net budget goal. And so we still need to um, work this out. We, we, it bears repeating that the um, school board finance committee has not even discussed the CIP budget yet. Um, it's been on the agenda and we've had a lot of other line items to go through. And so we just haven't gotten there yet. Um, so we still, as a finance committee, need to go through the CIP budget, but we um, are doing it with the appreciation of kind of this new path and working with the town council finance committee and the town council um, as a whole body to kind of determine if that there's something, if there's some action that they need to take or whether um, just their verbal guidance last night was enough for us to move forward with this um, path. Thanks if there's anything else there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Le Leanne, if you don't mind just moving forward a slide. You got it. Thank you. Uh, so um, I guess Sandy and Diane, and I think Kate is on, but just not a panelist. Um, we might want to bring her over just in case there's any questions. Uh, Leanne, but um, what we're what we're requesting is that you guys go back 
to with the leadership council and take another look at the proposal to remove any teacher reductions um, or staff that work directly with students. Um, in addition, we want to see what it looks like without um, removing any after school activities or programs. Um, and then we want to retain the lead teacher position in stipends. Um, and we'd like to obviously we're adding we're suggesting adding stuff back in. So um, we think that there is opportunity to make reductions in other areas such as um, the new curriculum. So deferring that. Um, additional re uh, reductions in administrative positions and uh, looking at additional reductions in instructional coaches. Um, the final thing that we'll, we'll request, and I brought this up at our last meeting, um, but we, I don't know that it ever really came to a resolution or an action that was taken, but we would like uh, to look into getting additional funding from boosters as an interim strategy to potentially keep and retain some of these sports and after school programs. Uh, so I'll pause there. I'll let April and Alicia comment if there's anything else that you guys want to say or, or add to this before we open it up to the rest of the board. Um, I support these recommendations and I'll speak more globally about the budget when, when it's my turn. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Same. Yep. Any, any comments or questions? Um, from the board or from Sandy and Diane? I would just add that I um, I know this has been challenging work for everybody and um, the clarity of your recommendations is going to be helpful to us and we will take those and work with them and I again think that um, it's been a long haul for everybody Whenever you take reductions in any school budget, it can become one's passion. And I appreciate the input from the public and our teachers. And again, the board, I appreciate that you've come to a place that you can direct the administrative team to further develop this budget. So thank you. Max? Thanks. Um, this is great. I really like what I'm seeing right here. I just had a question involving what you meant by uh, remove any after school activities slash programs. I know one of the things that I noticed on the document was um, a lot of stipends for advisors. So does that include like the stipends for the advisors or directors or coaches or whatever? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an extracurricular activity, right? So maybe we so should it's make like, that it's, clarification. It's like part of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I thanks for bringing that up. I mean, I, I, I think we should include that in there and April and Alicia, if you guys agree. That's the, the, the co-curriculars on the stipends should be remain in the budget. Is that the, is that the clarifying question? No, that, that, yeah, they either should remain or be included. So, so what we've asked is for the after school activities and program um, that to be removed from the reduction proposal, meaning it should be added back into the overall budget. Right. So do we want to include um, extra um, after uh, Mac? I, I assume what you're talking about is like key club. No, what I was asking like is like the advisors of when you say that the budget for an after school activity are you including what you pay the advisor like you're not cutting the stipends for the advisor so the club would have to fund the advisor i think that at least my position as i um and and again i'm not saying this to be to imply that you should be watching the finance committee meetings but as i've indicated in the finance committee meetings my position is that I think that we should retain those programs and um, what and, and whatever it takes to make that happen, whether whether it be retaining the funding for it or thinking creatively to obtain other mechanisms to ensure that they continue. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I think Max, maybe to further clarify, uh, and Kate can correct me if I'm wrong here, but what's in the budget for a lot of those programs is the stipend. 
Okay, cool. That's what I was asking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about Sorry. that. I was on mute, but I was going to say you guys way over answered Max's question. <laughs> Sarah got it in the end. <laughs> I enjoy long winded oh, response. Pot call, <laughs> pot call in the kettle black there, Hillary. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I thought a lot about. Um, about everything that, and I thought about preparing like a, a prepared statement and instead I decided to just put some notes down. Um, I It's going to seem odd maybe to people who are watching because um, I don't, I mean normally I have a lot of questions and, and I don't have a lot of questions this time but I just wanted to um, make it kind of clear that there may not be as many questions because I think every one of us on the board has been joining all, if not most, of the finance committee meetings, um, both for town council and for school board and joint um, council meet, uh, finance meetings. Um, and so we, I'm pretty well versed, certainly better than I have been in other years about um, what's, what has been going on. And um, so many of those questions have been asked by the finance committee because they've dug in and spent so many hours going through all of the, um, the budget itself and then further with the reduction. So I wanna thank you, the three of you that are on finance for doing all of that extra work. Um, and I, and I, I just wanna also say that um, these are all recommendations that as we've been going through, um, as I've been going through and listening to your, your conversations as a finance committee that, that I can support, I don't, I certainly don't want, um, I want the least impact to students as we can manage. Um, I know that everything has an impact to students that we do in the district, but um, I'm more concerned with the direct impact as opposed to, to the indirect impact. So um, the, so this looks kind of funny on the slide because it says remove any teachers, but you mean remove it from the removal list. <laughs> so I just wanna, um, I just want to. I agree with that. I don't want. I don't want to remove any teachers who have any direct or staff who have any direct student impact. Um, I think that the after-school activities and sports, while we may not know for certain that they um, can continue, just because of the uncertainty surrounding um, COVID-19 and what's going to happen in the fall, I, I do know that if we take the money out. Um, that they definitely won't happen and they probably won't happen for years to come. Um, and that is something like I've heard over and over again in the public comments um, and in emails that these are um, sometimes just as important to our students as um, their classroom work, um, especially now that they have um, been in such a stressful environment the past few months. Um, I also agree with deferring the new curriculum um, for for however long we need to, um, and the reductions in the administration and the instructional coaches. Um, I, I do wanna say too that I, 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 I never support larger class sizes, even in regular circumstances. And I certainly don't now when the health and safety of our students and teachers are at risk. So, um, oh, hey, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I just, I just want to make that really clear. Um, that's, that's always been kind of um, a soapbox that I stand on is, is class sizes. So that's certainly not something that I, um, that I want to see increase at this time or any time. Um, and then I just do want to really quickly also um, talk about the CIP. So I was really surprised last night when um, counselors made some comments about why that they thought maybe um, we were prioritizing CIP spending over um, jobs and teaching because I this is my third budget I've gone through and never have we ever been allowed to to look at the CIP budget in this is hard to explain. April explained it, but they're separate budgets. So we have never had the opportunity. If if the town council has said to us, you need to reduce um, your spending by this much or to get to this amount, it is always 
come out of our operating budget and um and and so i don't think any of us realized that there was an opportunity for that to be a one-to-one -one, where if we take out money from our cip we could add it back into the operating budget because we've never been able to do that before so i guess i'm interested to find out if that if those rules have changed or if if that's a possibility now i think um i mean i personally think that's great and i want want to I, I, you know, I want to make sure the finance committee looks into that. I just, I guess, I feel like we've been playing a game and um, with certain rules and they kind of got changed maybe last night. And if they are changed, then great, we can, we can work with that. And if they're not, then I just, I just want to put it out there that, that that's not, we're not prioritizing capital improvements over operating expenses. Um, so that's it. I think I'm done. Thanks, and I guess I'll just, I think I copied you guys all on it, but I, there is an email that I sent earlier today to Peter and Paul just to clarify the position on, on CIP and give us more direction. Okay, thank you. And thank you again for the work you've done. I've, I've been to more finance meetings than I can count and um, you guys are doing a really good job digging into everything and asking all the questions that, that I would ask myself. So I just wanna say again, if it seems like I'm not asking, or any of us aren't asking as many questions as we normally do. It's because um, I think we have, have had an unusual involvement already. Thanks, Paul. Um, I am not able to raise my hand, but I was in behind Hillary, so I'm just gonna be really brief. Um, I really wanna start by thanking our administrative team. I know how much effort it took to recreate the budget in a matter of two weeks from that first reading of town council um, to where you were able to present those tiers. Um, so thank you for doing that, um, it was not easy. I'm also incredibly appreciative of everything that our finance committee has done. Um, the hours that you have spent, the millions of questions that I know I have asked each of you, um, other board members have asked and you've been able to answer them in addition to digging into all of those line items for asking some really hard and often unpopular questions of our staff. Um, as you went through every single expense area looking for alternative options. Thank you for doing that. Um, thank you also to the community, whether you have spoken tonight, you have sent emails to us. Um, you're right, the damage that could have happened um, was pretty big, whether it was permanently removing um, programming or sports or activities from our curriculum that, as we know, historically are almost impossible to get back as budgets. We just don't get the leeway to bring those things back in future budgets. So um, taking them is not ideal. I am really excited about the fact that we're looking at an alternative way to get those back into the budget and not reduce this, especially where students who've been gone for so long, um, the last couple of months where they've been isolated, they're going to need these activities more than ever. This is where they get their socialization. This is how they reconnect with their peers. And it is so critical to learning in addition to what happens in the classroom, taking activities away is not a solution. Um, increasing class sizes, especially as we've heard a couple of times tonight with COVID-19 also is not an option, especially when we get down to the K2, where we're busting at the seams. There's no room now due to increased enrollment. We need the staff that we have. We cannot lose staff and it's it would just be unconscionable at this point to balance a budget on students and staff alone. Um, I would like to add one additional request along with the boosters funding. I'd like for us to look at our policies and are there options for us to modify policies that would allow more volunteerism so that we don't have to pay stipends? Can we look at alternate, alternative ways as Mr. McMillan mentioned about bringing our athletes to events that would allow for more social distancing it would reduce the expenses to the district because we're not incurring busing costs or fuel. The parents are there at those activities. Can we bring them to these events? Um, also like to look at whether or not there's some opportunity perhaps with um, increasing some of the fees that are associated with these as a short-term solution to raise in addition to booster funding. Could we do that to bring us over this point um, I totaled up what all of the after-school activities would be across all phase levels. 
and we're looking at approximately $158,000. I'm pretty sure we can find that somewhere in order to retain these, these necessary things for our students and for our staff. Um, so thank you again for all of the work that you guys have done. I am really excited about the changes that are being proposed tonight. Max, your hand is up still. Did you have another comment? Nick? And you're on mute. I know, thank you. You can hear me, right? Yes. So before I actually read my statement, I just want to thank uh, my fellow board members and the community for bearing with me as I stressed over technology tonight. Um, as you can tell from my backdrop, we're in a different place and I was supposed to, the internet was supposed to be easy to set up and hours later it was not. And uh, thanks to my husband being very patient with technical support, we are now online. So um, I will thank him as well as Spectrum and he can hear me. So I'm gonna read my, my I do have a, a written statement I wanna read. Um, last night at the Town Council Joint Finance Workshop, Town Manager Tom Hall shared some of the additional cutbacks that he and the town are willing to make in order to help minimize the tax burden on our citizens while still maintaining um, as much service to our community as possible. Among the proposed was a voluntary reduction of cost of living, COLA, raises from two of the town's three collective bargaining units. It is important to note that these were not salary cuts, but reductions in the COLA amounts, in other words, their smaller raises, for employees within those particular unions. And I would like to thank those bodies for their gesture of collaborative goodwill. As a school board, we have a similar task with a larger budget, more CBAs, and most importantly, the well-being of our students to consider. There is no doubt that the academics, that academics as traditionally defined, remain the foundation of good education. And I completely agree with so many people that spoke tonight on that topic. However, today's uh, student experience occurs as much outside of the classroom as it does within, which is, why, <clears throat> which is why this is one of the most important tenets of 21st century education and why our task is so challenging. Our, our district leadership team and the board finance committee have worked really hard and really diligently um, for all, across all four, uh, four phase levels to try and balance the impact of these potentially devastating cutbacks However, even with the most aggressive of the tiers presented, it does still include all the full, fully negotiated salary step increases and COLAs for four of our unions uh, and, and uh, tentative agreement for one uh, that still has an outstanding contract. I know this is tough to ask, but I would like to ask some, all of our unionized employees in the Scarborough Public School District to contemplate stepping forward as these two town unions did. Not, no one is asking for anyone to take a salary reduction, but perhaps a slightly reduced increase uh, from the agreed upon amounts for FY21 could make the difference in funding some of our programming and maybe keep a few more people gainfully employed. In a time when one out of seven people that are employable in our country is brushing up their resume, a small concession like this in pay could make the world of difference to someone who might otherwise find themselves in line at the Department of Labor. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Alicia. Thank you. Um, so I just some some of what I want to say, I've said at um, finance meetings, so it may be redundant to those people who have watched all of those meetings. But um, we have received feedback that um, people think it's important to hear where we stand. So I I do want to spell that out again tonight. I um, support the finance committee recommendations as I'm a member of the finance committee. Uh, it, it's a difficult recommendation to make because I recognize the amount of work that's gone into the presentation and the proposals that have been made. And um, my recommendations come after hearing feedback from uh, a number of teachers and, and students and parents concerned about the proposals. And it's not to say that I don't value um, the other things as well, because I do. Um, but I did hear the feedback and, and um, again, I, it was, there were a lot of themes and I think that these um, reductions um, F fell within those themes. And so that's that's why I've made that recommendation. Um, as it comes to the teacher's contract, um, 
I've said that I will not support any reductions in uh, teacher positions or programming until I know we've uh, turned over every rock in terms of other reductions. And um, unfortunately for me, that means a delay in ratifying the teacher contract. I know that that's not a popular opinion and it wasn't a difficult decision to arrive to. And um, I've had some real ethical dilemmas about that, but um, I think that it was the responsible decision. And until I really fully understand what the continued budget development means, that that's my position, unless if, um, I can be persuaded otherwise. And I'm not gonna um, talk any more about that because I've heard the feedback loud and clear that that. The, that part of it um, is pretty meaningless when you're deciding to um, table that decision. Um, so I do recognize that it's it's an unpopular decision. I recognize the difficult the difficulty that um, it, it creates with morale, and um, I'm sorry for that. But I think that it is a responsible decision um, in terms of. Town Council, our relationship with Town Council and the community's relationship with Town Council. I mean, ultimately, I think I really like the way Denise Blaine put it. I mean, ultimately, um, we need to first get over the hurdle of Town Council approving a budget. And um, I'm advocating for what we need for schools, but I also know as a realist that it needs to be a, um, uh, an, an, an appropriate budget and um, something that the town council will approve. And, and, you know, that's what Denise said. That's what her parents would support. And, you know, the second hurdle is we do need to get the voters to approve it. So um, it doesn't mean I don't like it, that I like it, but um, we do need to hit cross both of those hurdles. And we have far greater turnout today than we did ye at yesterday's meeting. And it would be helpful if people attended the town council meetings and let them know their concerns um, as you have done in, in your letters to them as well. Um, in terms of the CIP, I just wanna speak about that briefly. Um, I, I don't value CIP greater than staff. Um, and last night there was a discussion about possibly using the CIP as a as a method to um, sort of improve our status of reductions in the overall operating budget. But um, there weren't any reassurances about that. So I I I don't want anybody to um, say that this is sort of a given because I think sometimes the takeaways are are different than um, what has actually been said. There was a discussion with a few counselors saying, why are you not looking at the CIP? Um, and one of my questions was, will we be getting a credit towards our operating budget? And that, that was an answer. So I just want people to understand that that may help us or it may not help us. Um, but thank you for your patience. It's, it's difficult. It's something that we're, I know we're all taking seriously. It's our children, it's people's livelihoods, it's our community. We all feel very, really passionately about this and, and um, we're all trying to make the best decisions that we can. And so thank you for your engagement and, and for your feedback. I've, it's been helpful to me. Thank you, Alicia. Kate? And you're on mute, there you go. Hi guys, sorry uh, you're getting the butterfly. My video has been out for a while, but it's better than the blank screen, I guess. Um, I just wanted to weigh in real quick with um, a practical concern, which is to get some clarity on your bullet points and make sure that we understand in looking at the tiers and the specific positions that we're talking about, uh, what you consider to have direct student impact and what you don't. So, I mean, that might not be a conversation for this minute, but I wanna make sure that I check in with the finance committee um, before we sit down with the leadership team and talk about what your vision is um, a little in a little more depth than what we're seeing right now. Yeah, that's true, um, we can do that. 
we may, I don't know if we would need a, an actual motion for something like this, but I believe that the finance committee would be authorized to provide that clarification on behalf of the board um, based on the recommendations and the work that you guys have been doing to provide the clarity and the complete picture of the proposal that you've made. That would be great. I'm really thinking, you know, in terms of nuts and bolts going down through the tiers, um, talking about what it is that your vision is, um, you know, what changes you'd like to see, and, and then also a little more specific in terms of the recommendations for replacement. So that would be really helpful. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, Kate, I think it's actually cut off at the bottom of the screen if you can't see it. But um, yeah, the, the goal is sort of the next step would be to have a, another finance committee meeting on this early next week if we can, just to kind of go through this in more detail. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we'll, the finance committee would meet before the um, leadership council tackles the project. Uh, we can, why don't we take that offline and kind of yep. figure out what, what works in terms of schedules. Gotcha. Don't, don't want to turn this into a <laughs> scheduling program. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Kate. Kristen? Um, I want to start by saying thank you to all of you on the finance committee and to Kate and to the entire leadership team. I know you have put in so much work. And when you're working in a direction that's not really the way you want to be going, it makes the work even harder. So thank you. And a couple of you have touched upon it. I want to thank all the teachers and the community members and our students who've provided us with feedback. It's truly invaluable. And I hope that it continues as these decisions get made. Um, and obviously these, every cut really does hurt. You know, none of them feel good. But I, I do support and I'm appreciative of the approach that you've taken as a finance committee. Um, again, these are tough decisions and I, I just, I'm appreciative of, of the hard work that you've done so far. Um, I think my only question at this point is the deferring of the new curriculum. I don't know how in depth you've gone. I worry a little bit about any online components to those should we find ourselves in the needing to do distance learning in the future. So if that's just something we can keep in mind. And if, if that is the case, and there is this like ability to add funding later on for things that result from COVID-19, can curriculum fall into that category where we can add an online component somewhere? Thank you, Kristen. In April. Yeah. Well, oh, oh I, I'm sorry. sorry. I just wanted to just just want to make a comment about the um, COVID-19. One of the other things that we're exploring with with town council is if there's a way that we can sort of set up some sort of fund um, or account that we would pull from should there be unexpected costs in the fall. Um, for, for the school, but also for the town that are related to COVID-19. So I'm not super hopeful, um, but that it, that has been put out there as, you know, just a question and a topic for discussion. And April. Thanks, Leanne. Um, I want to start off by thanking Leanne for listening to board member feedback that we would all like to have the opportunity to have an individual voice. Um, it's difficult as a board sometimes um, when we're in committee meetings um, and especially when we're not in a meeting setting. Um, we don't have the authority to speak as school board members um, as individuals. And so this is really uh, nice, Leanne, that everyone has had the opportunity to say their individual um, thoughts. So thank you for this time. Um, I have a lot of talking points and I wrote them down. <laughs> um, and I'm also really nervous. Um, so I, first I'll start with um, talking a little bit about our collaboration with town council. Um, I am really proud of the work that we did. This goes way back to having joint um, finance committee meetings that started in the fall. Uh, we worked really hard to establish a set of budget goals that would work for both the school board and the town council. Um, 
we they listened to us when we said that setting a mill mill rate goal doesn't doesn't work. It's not something that the school board can work towards by ourselves. Um, and so they worked with us to develop a way that we could have a net budget goal. And up until our world got up ended by COVID, um, we were all in agreement about a lot of things. And the town council has really taken the time to learn and understand our budget process. And even though individual counselors, just like individual board members, um, have misunderstandings and differings of opinions, um, ultimately, I think that that collaboration has led us to a much better place. I fear that if they didn't have a good understanding of our budget and our budget development process, that they would have gone straight to zero at first reading, um, which would have put us in a terrible position. And so I appreciate um, and continue to hope that that collaboration holds true. I don't think that the school board fails to push back against the town council. Um, we are very capable of expressing our opinion um, and the town council finance committee rarely um, wonders where the school board stands on certain things. Uh, it, it, we are in a difficult position um, financially. Uh, we all have different situations at home that affect our ability to pay our taxes or to um, pay more or, or um, pay, pay less in some cases. Um, but ultimately, I believe that the best interest of the town is to put forward a budget that will pass. And I do not believe that a zero budget meets the needs of our students. And as we've all said, we will not support a zero budget. And we've communicated that to the town council that it's not in the best interest of the town to put forward a budget that we don't believe will pass. Um, next talking point, I want to talk about the health and safety of our kids. Um, it's obviously our number one priority, and we are entering into uncharted territory um, as a community and, and as a school district, and I would never endorse a budget that I feel compromises or severely limits um, our ability to deliver um, those high standards to our students. And like Hillary, I often um, beat the low class size drum, you know, even when we're not trying to social distance. I have been in those classrooms. I've seen the space constraints. I've seen what it's like um, when not every child has a proper desk or a hook for their coat. Um, I also, as a former teacher, uh, one of our public commenters said, the difference between teaching a class of 22 versus a class of 18 is unreal. And so while our district does boast low um, average class sizes, I would like to see those class sizes continue to be low. And that is my number one priority for the budget is maintaining those low class sizes and making sure that our kids have a healthy and safe um, environment to learn. And then lastly, this is kind of just general budget thinking on my part, which is I continue to view these reductions as a relief package. Um, it reflects the difficult economic situation that many people are finding themselves in. But I will ask the taxpayers to consider um, asking us, I will ask the taxpayers, sorry, to consider that asking us to keep a flat budget, which given an increase in our operating costs from year to year actually results in a significant decrease in our operating budget means that our school system has to commit to going without those things for an entire year. We are not in a position that the taxpayers may be in where if their economic situation changes, then they are able to enjoy some of the things that they cut back on when they were um, enduring difficult times. As a department and as a town, we will have to go without until the next budget cycle. Um, and I just don't think it's reasonable necessarily to expect us to go without all of these things for an entire year, not knowing what um, September is going to bring, not knowing what November or January is going to bring. Um, and should the economy rebound, um, we will not have the opportunity to reinvest in our schools um, in a way that is sustainable for the community next year. And so we need to think about what this reinvestment looks like. And it should not take the school department 10 years to recover um, from what I view as a relief package. Uh, I doubt that the taxpayers will 
support more than a 3% mill rate increase next year. Um, and I also understand and am very sensitive to the fact that some of our um, taxpayers that are on a fixed income cannot uh, support more than a 3% increase next year. Um, and so a modest increase to the mill rate this year that comes along with fewer reductions will be more affordable and more feasible for our community over time. The budget continues to be a work in progress and I am grateful to those who take their time um, to sit in meetings and to guide us and to answer our questions. And um, thank you for everybody who shared their concerns with us tonight. Great, thank you. All right. I believe that concludes um, the committee update. Moving into new business, a motion to accept the meeting minutes of the April 9th, 2020 meeting as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, Diana, if we can go ahead and do the roll, the uh, vote. Sure. Ms. Dorgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Caldwell? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. Um, the last item is our adjournment. Before we adjourn again, I know we've all said it multiple times tonight, but thank you so much to everybody who took the time to speak, who has sent us emails, um, who has shared their thoughts and concerns, um, or who's just watching. I do think that one of the greatest pieces of um, what has happened is the ability to be having a meeting in this format. It has just definitely increased participation. And for that, I am really grateful. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'm going to assume no discussion and we can move straight to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Si Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Ms. Caldwell? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Have a everybody. Great long weekend. Thank you.